Netflix is a champion of innovation, a company constantly looking for new ways to grow and outperform its competitors. Always trying new things and jumping on new trends is what allowed Netflix, which started as a small DVD rental business, to become one of the main video content creators and distributors in the world, with dozens of millions of subscribers, changing the established landscape of movie and TV entertainment forever. The very first innovation from Netflix was in the channel block of the business model. The founders, Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph, admired Amazon for selling books online and wanted to do the same with some other items. They were looking for products that are portable, durable and desirable enough to be sold online and delivered via post. At that time, VHS was the norm, but they figured that it was too heavy to be sent via post and too big to be easily stored in a warehouse. DVD, on the other hand, did fit the criteria. The only problem was that, well, it was a totally new technology, barely released, but they went with it anyway. So both these approaches, the delivery channel and the format, were already very forward-thinking for that time. And to differentiate itself from VHS renting competition even more, Netflix innovated on the revenue model. Instead of a pay-to-rent a single DVD model, Netflix tested subscriptions. You could rent as many DVDs as you wanted per month for a flat fee. And in addition to that, there were no due dates to return them and so no late fees, unlike traditional renting businesses. Still, despite these innovations, things weren't going so well for Netflix and at some point they proposed to get acquired by their main competitor called Blockbuster, which had a chain of physical shops for VHS and DVD rentals. Blockbuster refused the deal, and the funny story is that the whole company went bankrupt a few years later. In addition to these hurdles and this refusal, Netflix was also hit hard by the dot-com bubble. As many technology companies went bust and stocks were falling down, Netflix had to fire two-thirds of its employees to stay afloat. Eventually, after 2002, the growth in subscriptions resumed and the company went public. However, Netflix quickly understood that it would be a great idea to deliver a video directly online, although the internet speed at the time was too slow for high-quality content streaming. Once again, they were thinking about channel innovation for the delivery of their products even though the infrastructure was not yet ready. At that time, they were still renting a lot of DVDs, which were their main source of income. But we all know what happened afterwards, as CD and DVD sales started to fall rapidly. Normally, that would spell the end of any company dependent on them. But Netflix was forward-thinking enough as usual, and the video-on-demand services allowed it to keep growing while its DVD renting business was falling. So that was once again channel innovation, as not only did Netflix offer streaming services through the internet, they were also the first ones to make their content available on all devices, including PC, smartphones, tablets, smart TVs, etc. So channel innovation brought Netflix up until a point where content is delivered online on every possible device. But by that time, competitors were growing and proposing the same offers, so Netflix kept innovating in other areas. The main change was the creation of original content. Netflix started to invest in series and movie creation by either acquiring independent creators or creating in-house. That added a new key activity to its business model, which is content creation. This is called vertical integration, where a company owns several parts of its value chain. So, as of today, Netflix creates original shows like House of Cards or Orange is the New Black and distributes them on its platform. Speaking of which, Netflix came up with several other innovations, which fit into the value proposition block, starting with the video recommendation algorithm. This algorithm is very robust and attempts to suggest you new video shows that you will like based on many criteria. This is extremely useful to sort out content that individual viewers will enjoy out of thousands of different shows that exist in the catalog. Also, Netflix is now releasing entire seasons of its original shows at once, without making you wait weeks between each episode. When it comes to traditional TV, this weekly episode release is necessary to maintain a habit and make people watch advertising at prime times. But Netflix doesn't rely on advertising, so they don't need to do it. 
And for the Netflix subscriber, the advantage is that they can binge watch entire seasons at will, without the waiting time between episodes. With this content creation and distribution, Netflix has some traditional business actors worried. Of course, it definitely changes TV. People go away from linear TV to on-demand video. At the same time, Netflix does vertical integration and produces original content, which can change the balance of power between producers and broadcasting networks. And finally, with the release of original movies on small screens and not just shows, Netflix is turning movie theater businesses against it. It makes sense, since movie theaters make money on the exclusive release of new films, which become available on DVD, streaming or TV only much, much later. This makes sense for Netflix, who created a habit of disrupting delivery channels and skipping intermediaries, but it encounters resistance. For example, Netflix movies are not allowed to compete in the official selection of the International Film Festival in Cannes for this exact reason, because they don't release their movies in theaters. Cannes Film Festival is the most important event in the movie industry in the world, and its official selection and the Palme d'Or prize are extremely prestigious. But Netflix obviously won't go against its very own model, so it will be interesting to see if this resistance will have a negative impact on it or not. This escalation and these tensions between Netflix and the fine crowd of the Cannes Film Festival really is a big deal. It's the typical confrontation between the incumbents and the industry disruptors. However, Netflix should be careful, because a big theater screen is not only a different delivery channel for movies, it's also a totally different experience for the moviegoers compared to small screens like TV. So will Netflix keep ignoring that, or will it embrace it and keep following its logic? In this case, acquire and create its own movie theater experience, for example. It might sound crazy right now, but it's not unrealistic given Netflix's innovation and vertical integration track record. So, Netflix disrupted the sales and delivery channels of the industry many times over. The revenue model with subscriptions instead of one-time payments. It added innovative value propositions for its subscribers, like relevant recommendations and full-season releases. And it expanded vertically by adding original content creation into its key activities. One thing for sure, Netflix keeps gaining subscribers and it will continue to create new original content, including series, movies and documentaries. What will be its new major innovation is yet to be seen, but given how innovative that company generally is, it's safe to assume that there will be surprises. If you want to learn more about the business models of the most innovative companies, Go check my online course by following the link in the description. It's a great course that will make you a master of innovation strategy and help you come up with many interesting ideas. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon.